That's completely my fault. I had the wrong button clicked. Oh, oh. <laughs> Do not ever click the loop button in this platform. I just oh, learned so for the very first time. Uh, <laughs> earlier, as Ben came in, everybody, thank you for joining. This is the Domo Lunch and Learn. As, as Ben came in, I was kind of jamming to that, right, uh, as I got started. And I had the loop button pressed because I just wanted to listen to that musical track for like five minutes. Uh, so that's why we had a, a brief uh, moment of issue here uh, with technology. But we're set to go. Another Domo Lunch and Learn. I welcome my good friend, Ben Shine. We'll be talking about very powerful Domo bricks today available through the App Store that are going to have immediate impact. So if you are interested in Domo bricks, if you are a first timer into Domo bricks, if you want to watch this walkthrough and, and click the links to all of the comment sections that we'll give you below to make sure that you get this Domo brick, we are confident it's going to be super impactful to you immediately, which is why I love bringing Ben on. Uh, he always brings us stuff that you can walk away with uh, and use in your organization. We do have a few promotions before we get started. As usual, our second community virtual meetup is March 16th. It's less than 10 days away. You can register at the links below or to the side, wherever the comments and chat section may be during our live streams. Still haven't figured that one out, but it's here somewhere. Uh, those links will be available for you to click. Also, up here in the right-hand corner of the screen, the Doma Palooza link. Obviously, March 29th, it's our free user event. You can register by clicking that QR code above. You can also find all of our content that we have been doing these Lunch and Learn live streams for now almost two full months, almost three months. I think there's 12 to 15 videos available. Uh, you can check all of those out in our community forums, our dojo below, uh, and the QR code will get you there. So I think I've promoted everything I need to. Uh, our good friend, Ben Shine, uh, Domo's Senior Vice President of Product, always glad to have him because he completely knocks it out of the park, is one of the fan favorites on our user group as well as our community. So, Ben, thank you again for joining us today. Really excited to get started. Thanks, Eddie, and thanks. It's been really exciting to watch all the content get out there, so thank you for driving that and yeah. keeping the ship moving forward. So that's that's appreciated <laughs> by the whole community and by Domo for sure. So I keep it up. That. Yeah, the, um, the, ship may, the ship may hit an island or, or, a, or a tall rock every once in a while, but it's moving yeah. forward. We'll learn something, though, so that's We will, part. absolutely, so, absolutely. Uh, so it's it's funny. I actually think um, part of this this live stream actually we could credit to laziness um, <laughs> because we actually released this Domo brick sometime last year, and I can tell a little bit of the story of it. And ever since then, I've been saying, you know, it's they're so powerful. It's a little confusing to set up. I really should do a video. And finally, once Eddie started these, I'm like, huh? If we do a live stream, <laughs> we're gonna have a video, and then it'll force me to actually do this. And I'm gonna do it live. I've done a little prep. Um, Love it, but. But, you know, a little bit of the history of, of this brick, and it's a lot of the bricks we have out there, um, and I'll show a little bit how to find it and things like that, too, and I know we'll put the link out, is, you know, we had done some sort of cool things around, you know, aligning search and filter for some different customers where we did, we're doing more custom um, apps in our app framework from our engineering services team, um, you know, trying to combine different fields and make the search and filter experience a little more custom. And I kept on pushing with God, if we just had this as a Domo brick, it would be really useful and people would yeah. use it. Um, and so I actually, I borrowed some resources from our engineering services team. So big shout out to them because there's some work to do from changing from more of an app framework, classic thing to working as a brick. Um, and they finally did it. Uh, we haven't seen a ton of adoption. I, I take some of that on me again. Like this is not the simplest thing to set up, but that's part of why I, I wanted to almost put a line in the sand and say, I'm going to do it within whatever 20, 30 minutes we have here. Um, and I'm going to do it for new data um, and we'll have that sort of documented and then people can try it out um, on their own. So let, let me go ahead and just walk through a little bit about what we're trying to do here with this brick and then we can do some of the setup with a fun data set that I have. Absolutely. And for everybody that is watching and joining us, let us know where you're from. Let us know who's joining us in the comments and live chat section. Ben is Always a guy that would love to dive in and, and learn more about what you're doing, uh, whether you're new to Domo or whether you're a seasoned vet, uh, we'd love to hear from you. So use the comment and chat section below if you have any questions, obviously ship them Ben's way. And uh, I'll, this is not about me. This is about Ben and his uh, beautiful Domo brick. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of the way and let him demo uh, this screen. I think we've got you, Ben. All right. So you see my screen. Absolutely. We're beautiful. ready to go. Um, so I can just show you again, I want to sort of show people how 
um, they might find it. Um, if you search for DDX brick, you'll see a whole bunch of different sort of starter bricks, and we'll get through how you sort of edit those and stuff. Um, I will just call out as we get towards Domo Palooza, we are going to be rebranding these as just Domo bricks. Um, we're going to have to go through and rename and, and all that, but we'll, we'll have easy ways to still find it. But um, if you search for um, DDX filter, um, this one I'm going to talk about, it's, it's this one called DDX Searchable Filter App, multiple columns. Very, you can tell when we let marketing do things and when we let our engineers do things, no comments. Um, and so uh, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to talk a little bit about, about what this does. And then again, we'll, we're going to look at some data and actually do it um, together. Uh, and so if I, if I look, we actually do have on our COVID tracker, uh, which is now, gosh, we probably should have checked. We're getting close to the three-year anniversary of our launching our COVID tracker three years ago. Uh, we do have a version of this that's working. So if you, so it's sort of nice to have an example of how it might work and I'll walk you through that and then we'll look at some of the code and do it for a new data set. Um, so if I, if I click on this link um, to the data explorer in the COVID tracker, um, up top here in the middle, this is a this is that brick, um, right? And then so a few of the things this lets me do um, compared to sort of a normal filter experience up here um, within Domo. So one thing is if I look here, um, as I start typing, again, this is the live demo gods, right? So if I type in Washington, right, it's actually showing me options across multiple columns in my table, right? So I have state, I have U.S. County, I have um, Washington, D.C. somewhere down here, which is it's a political statement. It's not really a state, but we won't get into uh, politics. I, one thing I learned with the COVID tracker is geography is political. And so you have to be careful with your data around geography, right? Um, uh, right, or Washington, Paris, Louisiana, right? So, so that's letting me in one drop down look across multiple fields. Um, the other thing this lets me do is some translation, uh, right? So, if I um, went through and I said, um, you know, my zip code, so this is where I actually live, don't come stalk me. Uh, maybe that's a bad rule against stalking, but um, so if I click here on zip code, I'll see in my my app here, my my Domo brick. It says zip code equal five five four one six. It's actually translated that to FIPS or county code, right? So the user didn't need to know that the FIPS code was twenty seven or the county's actually had a pin. I'm letting the user put in five five four one six, and I'm translating it for them. Um, and then the other thing that it lets me do is sort of maybe some more complex groupings of data like that's not necessarily in a column but i wanted to find them and again we'll get to how we define those sort of within the data set that wires it up um and so if i wanted to look at um north central us right so that's a us region not a state not a country and um, when i click there it's actually filtering on all these states um that i had here right um so even though it's north central it does that um, if I start filtering on other items, um, right, you see it's actually sort of keeping track of what, what I've actually already filtered on. Um, so it also becomes sort of like a, a synopsis of what has been filtered. Uh, let me get rid of these real quick. Uh, and so, um, you know, I also have the option to do, let's see, Washington to do all 33 in my search, right? Which is something a little bit different than our standard uh, uh, filter. Um, and again, I can place this because this is just an object within my dashboard. I could place this farther down the page. I could have it you know, next to, and I actually think I might have a second version of this on this page, um, right? So here is another version of it. Where down here, if I wanted to look for North Carolina, it's gonna come down here and do that same thing. I could do that um, and sort of see, just the North Carolina data, or if I start looking at some of these specific metrics, again, it's interacting back and forth with those page filters um, so that I can know what else is going on, even if I click somewhere else. So it's it's pretty powerful. I think it's something, especially that multiple columns, we've seen some situations where, right, imagine if you had, a, and I'm gonna use a simpler table to demo this in a second, but imagine if you had a table with like 20 different variables or 50, it had age, it had product name, it had product description, it had category and department. And as a user, I don't always even know, even if I had all these dropdowns. So one is I could have 20 dropdowns, it's a lot of real estate. And two is, 
I don't know where I'm looking. Where was pink? Is pink color? Is it item type? Is it description? How do I find those? And so this is letting me curate a sort of unified um, experience there for people um, to do that, right? And I think that is, is a lot of the power here um, of being able to do that and create a unified search experience that is controlled by you as the developer of the dashboard, which is what we'll see in a second. Um, and so, uh, when I when I download any Domo brick, and then we'll go and look at this in a second when I when I go to edit it, um, it's going to have some of this information. So you'll see like it has information about um, this page I just looked at. Um, it has some different fields you have to set. To, you know what's the um, text, what's the background color, uh, what's the, what are these different columns, which we'll get into what those are exactly. Um, but it lets me configure that and wire up the data that I want. Uh, and so for this example, what I'm going to do is um, use some data we use for a Domo and Data blog. So if you if you ever want to look at Domo and Data, so I'm doing another shameless plug. Uh, click here. Um, these are all sort of cool posts. I know Jace uh, McLean on my team is working on something for the, the NCAA tournament in the next week or two. Uh, but I did this blog post on... Taylor Swift and dominating the um, the charts, right? She's been one of those. She had whatever, all 10 top 10s at once at one point. And so uh, there's a whole bunch of sections, but I have this big sort of data explorer section similar to uh, what um, we were looking at before, um, right? And so I want to, in theory, I'm, what I want to do is like, what if I wanted to combine this or add multiple fields and say, I don't want to have to select artists or select song. I want to have that combined experience that, um, we had before. Uh, and so this is that page. And so what I'm going to do is, and this is actually live. Again, I'm a real glutton for punishment. Um, I can actually now, this is a nice thing we added, is that you can actually just drag something from the App Store out onto your page. Maybe if I want to put it here, then I'll make some space. Right? So I could actually search for from here. If I can type right. This one, the multiple columns one, uh, and I can click get. There could be a couple paint drawing uh, items here. <laughs> when uh, so again, since I'm a glutton for doing this fully live. Uh, okay, so I'm going to save this. So now I have this app, and obviously it's in sort of these defaults. It's not going to do anything right now, right? Because it's just it might um, you know there's no data, or I can't tell, um, but. The data doesn't match my data, right? So if I say Amistad City, there's no even city field for it to filter on. So it's basically doing nothing. Um, and so I need to configure it. Again, this is why it's a little bit trickier. It's not just like, oh, here it is and I'm done. Um, but again, I'm telling you, right, we're going to get this done in whatever it is, 15 minutes uh, or maybe a little longer. We'll see. But it's well worth it to spend a little time thinking about this and, and how you want to use it. And I found multiple places where I continue to use it as well. Um, so I'm going to go here. Uh, when I edit the card, again, you sort of see we do have instructions. Like you will need to use data set one to nine to select the data sources, which we'll, we'll get there. Um, but we also need a data set that has my filters. And again, I know that's extra work, but what it then becomes is this sort of beautiful. And I'm a big fan of this. We've used this with governance toolkit. Um, we've used it with a number of situations where I now have this sort of central table this is another advantage of this so i want one central table that i can use across data sets as long as they have the same name where i control things and in beast modes you know calculated fields get at this a little bit but it's it's not as precise it's not as flexible as what i have here right so basically i need to create a table that has similar things to this but for my data for um taylor Swift for the billboard charts right so i have a display context filter field um, display search and filter value. And we have descriptions here of what these are, right? So um, filter field, this is the column name in the data set. Um, the value is the exact value you want to use when you're filtering. And then I have display context, which was the parentheses of like, it's a state, it's a county, and then display search. What is it display to the user when I search? Like North Central we saw before. So those are the four things I need in the table to be able to start showing this. Um, and again, I might want to, you know, again, this says search U.S. locations. I might even just change this now 
And I will say, I'm not a coder. If I had to do this from scratch, I couldn't do it, right? I need this starter. I needed help from someone else to create this so that then I could have this lunch and learn and tell people they should use this. Um, so, um, you know, I might say search, artist, song, et cetera. So that's the only thing I'm actually changing right now. Um, but I'm still not gonna have my data, right? So I need to sort of prep my data into those columns we were talking about before. Uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and go to look at my data, which is the last 40 years of the Billboard Hot 100. Um, now, one thing I'm going to do, and again, this probably you don't need this on this one because it's only 200,000 rows of data, but another use case for this we've seen is say I have like a data set with like 500 million rows. And I might have either some changing attributes or I don't want to have to go and update the full data set every time I change that these 10 items are called the on sale items or the promo items or whatever it is. I talk a lot of retail, I like store can target. Um, and so I can, now, I can use views as inputs into Magic ETL so that I can sort of summarize my data in the ways that I want it, right? So I'm going to create two views, right? So I have a song, right? So I basically want a list of all the songs. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to group by song, and then I'm just going to do a count. I won't really use a count, but that will help me do this. So this is going to give me every single song that's ever been in there, right? So that's 14,000 rows. And I'm just going to save this as song list billboard. And then, so, I don't know what happened. Let's watch it again. Maybe I didn't hit save. There it is. I don't know why I was not liking me before because I'm on, I'm on live stream. It's not always going to do something wrong. Um, right. So I'm going to do that one. And then I'm also going to do um, a similar one just for the list of artists. Um, And I'll do my count again. So here are the 4,800 artists who have ever appeared. And obviously some of them have weird quotes and stuff, but so I'm gonna go artist. There we go. And so now I'm gonna use my good old friend, Magic ETL. I'm gonna bring in the other one as well. I did save it twice. So I was just impatient. That's another theme of maybe Ben Shine's life, if you ask my family. Um, I'm going to go here and go to utility, and I'm going to add some formulas. Right. And I'm just going to actually go back over here to just double check what everything. I might as well keep the names consistent so I don't have to redo them. You could, I can change those names if you don't like the certain default names we have in here. Um, but really, it's just as easy to do the same one uh, if I want it. So I'm going to say display search. This one. I'm going to add some formulas. So display search is going to be for this one artist. And then display context. It's going to be artist, right? So that's what's going to show in the parentheses. And then filter field, right? And again, like you can, this is going to let me like, again, start to do some translation for my users. If the filter name is really ugly, then they don't have to see that. They're going to see the artist and they're going to see display context of artist. Um, but it could be that the filter field is field 77792. Right, we know that's not the case. Um, we know it's actually just the column is called artist, but we can we can do that. And then the last one I need is the filter value. So what am I actually passing to this filter? Uh, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to actually pass the artist name. Uh, right again, I could have a different display 
um, right? So I could display this as artist and song title. I could display it as di different information, right? Depending on what I needed. Um, and then the nice thing is once I've sort of done this in terms of a formula, I could just duplicate it, right? So if I keep on doing these over and over again, you will see we'll come back and add some as well. I can come here, oh, right? So it doesn't have a fill card because this is the songs. So I'm going to do song and I'm going to say the this the field name is song. And again, I'm picking a fairly simple example, but you can see the power of being able to control this in a way that really lets me, um, you know, sort of bring everything together and, and make some changes that maybe my end user doesn't want to see. And if, if they were just using the filters at the top of a page, they would see that, right? Because that's the field name in the in the in the um, in the data set. I'm going to say include all columns. This is also a little nerve wracking. I'm sure someone might tell me I'm doing this inefficiently, um, or there's a better way to use magic. But that's sort of the beauty of, of our user community is that there's always better ways, even if this guy um, as SVP product doesn't know them all. Um, I'm just going to call this billboard uh, search filter config. And I'm also going to go in here and say, when data sets update, right? So if either one of these updates, I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And I can't see the button because it's down there. And I'm gonna call this as billboard search filter config. I'm checking my time. I don't want it to take too long. Save and run. Okay, I'm gonna let this run. This could be another paint dry, but hopefully using views i'm only adding a, a little bit of data here um let me just check to make sure i don't know if there's any comments oh elliot i knew elliot would come and try to poke me uh yeah so i mean i think um some of the use cases really are around like again if i have like 20 different columns that someone wants to filter on and the, even just the idea of putting 20 drop downs is a lot Yes, they could use the top filter, but that gets a lot better. So again, if I want one place where I can look across any 20 columns, and this is just where it is, um, we've seen that use case of like, like I have different groupings, and we'll get to this a little bit where we can sort of do more of like a segment, right? So if I, if I segment, I want to say these group of customers, and right, what I'm doing is I'm saying this group of customers, and it's actually a list of customer IDs. So the end user types in, um, you know, VIP customers, but on the back end, the table is configured to say the VIP customer means customer ID and blah, 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 blah. Um, one constraint on this is it is using a link, right? It's sort of talking back and forth via the link, like a P filter. And so at some point, I forget what the limit is. Elliot probably would know more than me, like just an HTML link can only have so many characters. So you can get, that is where you sort of push the limits of it. But there's a lot you can do even within those limits. Okay, so that wasn't too bad, 11 seconds. And Elliot saved me with a question. Uh, so thank you, Elliot. I owe you one. Uh, so now I'm back here in my main thing. And again, I want to change from the default one to the one I just created. Right? Uh, okay. Nope. Oh, that's, well, it does have, it, it should still work. But actually, I probably, if I want it to be clean in my demo, I probably don't need all those extra fields, to be quite honest, right? The ones that were originally in there, the counts and stuff. And so I was stick away from making it look clean. So we'll, we'll fix this just so that it doesn't even have those to do things, right? We don't need artists, uh, whoops, wrong section. I wanted the columns to drop. So artist, count rank, song there. We just need those four that are needed to configure it. Um, and again, I, it, it shouldn't really matter, but uh, whoops. See, I'm just making sure I'm on my toes here. Save and run. I think people will tell you always save comments in your versions if you want people to know what you're doing so I could see what's going on. Um, but now if I save this and we'll come back and see what's there now, um, I actually do have this. Um, Huh. Right, so if I wanted to look for Taylor Swift, 
But there's Taylor Swift, Tim McGraw with Taylor Swift, and Zane and Taylor Swift, which is also nice. And I can do all three from here, um, right? And so then I'm filtering on everything there. But again, maybe I didn't know that. Maybe I'm looking for um, love, right? So I can now see there's lots of songs with love, but then there's also Love and Money, the artist, um, right? So before I would have had to check here, check there, go back and forth, I'm going to do that. Um, now, one thing we're going to notice, though, is if I, so let's do this. If I do love, oops, oh, because those are only in the top 100. Are they really not loves? I'll to, I think I have too many, I have too many filters. I got myself confused. I'll go back to just my normal default here. Um, so what we're going to see real quick is the last step that we're missing here. Um, oh, it's not. Oh, because it's looking. See, look, this is Elliot or anyone else out there. This is right. Like it, 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 they're not congruent, right? So it's saying song name and artist are together. So that's not going to work. Um, but that's again, I might filter that differently or set it up differently. Um, yep. And so I, again, we'll see like now as we click here it's going to go ahead and know um, what is the data going on with other items. If I do yesterday, uh, it should start doing that too. Or if I wanted to filter on song and artists, um, you'll see some of that. Oh, so it's not, so that's right. So if, if this is the last piece I just forget, and that's not an appropriate song, we should probably have a family friendly version here another Murphy's Law of being live. Um, the one other thing you want to do is, um, is those other data sets, right? And so this is, this is the last thing that's a little bit confusing is if I want to tell it what other data sets on the page to listen to, if I want those filters to update. So it doesn't know what's on the page and that's something we'll, we could probably work on in terms of data breaks. Um, so what it's saying here, right, is that Use data sets one to nine to select all the data sets being used to filter the page with. This tells the app which data sets are being used, right? So if I go to data set one, it's using this US locations. Um, and I think it's this one, it's the one that everything's worked on. Yep. So I want to just tell it, hey, by the way, this is the data set you should monitor. And you just need to select it there. And now if I do save and finish, and now what it should do is if I click on this, right? So now it does know, uh, I thought we fixed that. But anyway, but so it has the calculation is you proof Morgan Whalen, um, right? And so it has that two-way communication. That's the last step you need to do there to make that work and to have sort of the full end-to-end -end, um, experience. Uh, and then what I can do now, I could probably get rid of these other two. And again, this is on that block. So you could go look at it and um, play with it. Give this a little more space because I no longer need the individual ones. I just sort of have this one combined one. Let me give this more space too. Again. Um, so the last one, and again, and hopefully as you, as, if you start playing with this, you start saying, and this is what happened with me too, of like, okay, well, that was cool. Well, what else can I do? Well, I could do segments. I can do random groupings of stuff. I can, um, you know, think about different columns that I forgot to add that I don't want to have to, again, every time I add a column, I'm not adding new things here. I just have my one focused area to do this work. And so, um, the way that it, it actually happens is, um, you know, I just, I'm just keep on adding, right? I could have a lot of different options in here without having to continue to take up space. The other thing, uh, the last one I just wanted to show, I'm checking time again. So not bad. That probably took us 15 minutes to set it up. So it's not as scary as it seems. I know it took a little work to think about it, but it's, it's super powerful once it's there. Um, so another, another thing I was thinking about is, well, what if I wanted to know any artist who's ever had a number one hit, but I don't want to just see their number one hits, right? I want to segment it. I want to see at everything they've ever done, but I know that I want this list of artists and I don't want the user to have to go through and click. And maybe I could do that with some different filters and even with fix, um, but I want to guide that user experience, right? 
So what I'm going to do is do another view. Um, actually, let me just do this so I don't lose myself. And I will go back to this. And so this is going to be open with user explorer. I'm going to say filter for right anyone who's had a number one hit. And again, like some of this you could have done. Like I, I look again, it's two hundred thousand rows. I probably could have done it in my main ETL. Imagine job that was performing this, but imagine if I had 300 million rows. I want to reprocess everything. I just want to sort of focus in on one little segment and then make it usable. So this is every artist. Um, and I guess I would want uh, artist. Finished. Um, same thing I could also do with the song, right? So maybe um, I want any song that has been one number one, but I want to see their whole history, even when they were number two, number three, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to do this. Uh, and again, you maybe don't need to do it as a view, right? This is only 364 rows. Um, but again, that's sort of, I like that dynamic that I could sort of you know do it that way. So then I can come back here, I'm gonna come back, um, even this idea of like, man, like, I have this sort of great, this becomes my command center for all filtering across multiple dashboards, across multiple logic. I don't have to go change a beast mode in 10 locations. I don't have to go change a layout in 10 locations to add a drop down, right? I'm just sending it out. I can use that same app and the same config file across a hundred different dashboards, um, which is some of the value we have seen, um, you know, in some of the, the different interests and uses of Domo bricks. And I know we'll have more at Domoposa and I, Noah, Noah Finberg is doing more on it too. So it's just, you know, this, this is just one little small application of it. Um, and so in this case, what I want it um, to display is not just not the artist. I just want to say um, artist with number one song. Then I might just call this a segment, right? So that it sort of tells them, and again, you can do whatever you want, but I'm going to say segment because I'm calling it a segment, um, but I'm still going to filter an artist and the filter value is artist, right? So I'm still going to filter on those other fields, but what the user sees is going to be artist with the number one song. Um, I'm going to add this in here. I should just make sure to drop the columns I don't want. Uh, all the, yep. uh, and then I'm going to go save and run. Uh, and again, imagine if I had this on five pages, 10 pages, 20 pages. This is one place for me to change that logic, which I really um, like that approach as well. So that's done in 10 seconds. So now if I go back here, right? So now I see artists with a number one song segment, right? And so now I'm going to get that, right? But again, I'm not just seeing, um, you know, I can see everyone. I could see again, how many this is like, um, songs and ch charts in the top 100, right? I'm also using some pretty cool variables here, by the way. So if I want to switch from song on charts to like song weeks, um, it's going to still do that, right? So I can see these are the biggest ones, but it's not um, not just showing me number one, right? So if I look down at some of this data here, I could see it's you know number ten. Um, you know, I could see here the average ranking, right? If I just filtered for number one, it's going to say everything's number one because it's not showing me that full segment. Um, and so that's something, you know, it's something that Adobe always did really well in Adobe Analytics. Um, and um, yeah, so I think, and again, Magic ETL, like that, that's, that's what I love about this dynamic. So Noah was saying that like using Magic to define it, um, it's just, again, because then I could do anything. It could be Bob. So like imagine like your CEO comes back and says, oh, I really want to filter on these eight random customers. Oh God, do I really want to go change my core, um, you know, my, my core uh, data flow with all of my other logic and with sales data and sales goals, and I might mess it up and I don't want to add a new column. Uh, I have this sort of reflex of being able to do it. And so, um, yeah, I just, again, I love uh, this little app. It's like the little uh, Domo brick that could, 
I recognize it is not as simple as, right? I mean, again, and then we were thinking more broadly, like some of the billable apps are super simple, um, right? If I wanted to add a more dynamic pie chart or, you know, multiple images on one thing, I do that, I wire up the data, it's pretty quick. This does require a little bit of lifting, but in my opinion, it's really worth the lift. Um, and so I'm really excited that I got this chance. And again, we did it in 15 minutes. So if you want to have multiple columns in one place, if you want to do some translation for end users, if you want to be able to do segmentation across some different fields or do groupings that are really hard to do in a big data set, worth 15 minutes of your time to start investing in and start um, trying this. And then uh, you can go from there. So Eddie, I think that's all I have. If there's not other questions or other stuff that you want me to go into. Yeah, that's awesome. I I say this a lot when Ben is around, but uh, big brain Ben Shine. Like there is definitely a logic to the things that he was describing no hair, in the session, right? No, I I mean it's it, it's it speaks to what kind of Noah said, right? Like we're all uh, very lucky to have someone like Ben around and to be able to share his knowledge on these lunch and learns is super important because it's not just the tool, which we agree. It's an incredible tool. Uh, but it's also like how you're defining, you know, the mindset and going in and kind of working through that, whether you're using magic ETL or, uh, you know, you're renaming DDX at some point, as Elliot said, little, little, little uh, uh, what it is a little cheekiness from, from Elliot. Come on, buddy. Uh, but we do yes. appreciate everybody joining <laughs> today. Uh, and, and Noah, thank you. And, and Elliot, thank you for commenting. If anybody has any last minute questions, get them in in the next 15 to 20 seconds because I'm wrapping things up here. Um, but Ben, thank you. Really appreciate you coming in and sharing. Will we expect yeah, another Ben Shine session soon? Oh, I, I think, I mean, I'm sure there will be, but I, I, it all just is dependent on my own laziness to not get other things done. <laughs> um, can, we, can we do a prep session for Domo Palooza? We'll just do that as a live one and then it'll make, make it easier for me, but yes. That'll be um, it, yeah. I think the goal I, is... And I do think the goal is that we might do one leading up to Domo Palooza. And a, a great call out if you haven't yet registered for Domo yeah. Palooza. Um, but we might do one leading up to Domo Palooza as kind of like a pre conference uh, live session. Yeah. That pretty cool. No, that would be great. And I think and even after him, I was telling Andy before we started, I'm just I'm in this new role, which I started in January. There's a lot of work that goes into Domo Palooza, whether it's virtual or in person. And, but a lot of it is about editing and focusing and what are the big things. And so, what's a two minute video could be an awesome 45 minute conversation um, for the community. And so I think right. I'm excited to see how me, how the rest of my, my product managers and, and, and strategic architects are, are can get out there and just sort of start, you know, go one level deeper, two level deeper, three level right. deeper than what we can do in a, in a quick um, blurb of Domo Palooza, which is going to get us excited and sort of lays out the vision, but there's always more there. So Thank you again for having this forum so we can yeah. do those things. So I'm excited to do that. I love it. Towards... I always love it. it. It gives us an opportunity to share with our users, obviously, and that content just kind of snowballs. So continue to watch, like, subscribe, do all the things. Uh, share this with your organizations. Share this with your friends that are using Domo. Uh, and just let them know. We do these every Tuesday and Thursday. we got another good one coming up this Thursday with Dan Brenton. Uh, who's going to talk about data set alerts. So excited about wow. that one as well. Which I'm going to enjoy because it's actually one of these very few features in Domo that I don't have very close personal experience with. I have not used a ton of data set alerts. And I actually mentioned that to someone the other day who was asking me a question about them. And so I should block my calendar or come back and, and listen to Dan, who always has a ton of wisdom. So um yeah, Ben Shine, one. not only owners of product, also a purveyor of the information yes, that we're sharing on always. the Lunch and Learns about the product. I love it. Always a learner. So I appreciate that. Uh, so join us this Thursday. Uh, I can't thank Ben enough and everybody that's joined and watching today on this Domo Lunch and Learn. We'll catch you on the next one again uh, Thursday at 1030 Mountain AM, not PM, uh, which is 1230 <laughs> Eastern Time. Appreciate everybody joining. Thanks again. Thanks, everyone.